Greetings. Welcome back to video lecture series on computer architecture. My name is Dr. Prashant Rachana. Uh, in this uh, video lecture, uh, I am going to talk uh, on simple computer levels of uh, programming languages. Then uh, we'll see what is a compiler, what are compiler and uh, assembler. Then we'll see the assembly language in sections. So first uh, topic of the, uh, today's discussion is uh, simple uh, computer levels of programming language. That is what are the different types of uh, programming languages uh, which are available uh, in the computer architecture. So uh, first we will see what is a programming language. So a programming language is defined, uh, uh, defines a set of uh, instructions that are uh, compiled together to perform a specific task by the uh, CPU that is central processing unit. So some of the programming languages, uh, high level uh, programming languages as you can see are C, C++, uh, uh, Python and other languages. So each programming language uh, contains a unique uh, set of uh, keywords uh, and uh, syntax which are used to create a set of uh, instructions. So there are thousands of programming languages which are available uh, which are used for uh, specific uh, purposes. So these languages vary in uh, the levels of abstraction uh, they provide uh, from the hardware. So some programming languages provides less or no abstraction while uh, some uh, provide higher abstraction. So, so now we will see what are the different uh, types of uh, uh, programming languages available. So the programming languages are classified into two main categories that is a low level uh, language and high level language. And this figure shows the same thing. So in the, in the top of the hierarchy, there is a high level language. So next to that is the assembly language and the machine language, which comes in the low level language. So we'll see our, uh, uh, we'll see these languages one by one. So as we go from the top to the bottom of the hierarchy, we'll see uh, the first uh, level of abstraction is the high level language, then the two types of low level languages, then the hard. So we will see these uh, uh, low level languages and high level languages uh, one by one. So this figure shows the two types of uh, uh, the languages that is high level language and low level language as you can see in the uh, this hierarchy diagram. So high level languages we can give some examples as C, C++, uh, uh, Pascal, Python, Java, Python, Java and all. Then uh, these two are the types of low level languages. So low level languages. So we'll see uh, these uh, uh, things one by one. So low level language. So low level language is a, a programming language that provides uh, uh, no abstraction from the hardware and it represents uh, in zeros and uh, uh, one forms which are uh, machine instructions. So the language that comes under the category of this are like machine level language and assembly language. So in the low level language, uh, the program will be written uh, in, in, uh, in terms of zeros and ones. So again in the low level uh, language, two types are there, that is assembly language and ma machine, uh, machine uh, language. So we'll see this uh, one by one. So machine level language, so as the name itself uh, depicts here, so in the machine level language, the complete set of instructions are uh, will, be, will be in the form of, will be in, uh, in zeros and ones. So the complete program written in the machine level language are in the form of zeros and ones. So only, uh, so as we know that the computer, uh, the computer understands only the machine level language. So if you write in the machine level language, uh, the computer understands this easily and it will be executed easily. But the problem uh, with the uh, uh, machine level languages is very difficult uh, to write the program and uh, uh, if it gets any errors then it is very difficult to debug the errors and uh, uh, and it is uh, it is uh, difficult to understand also. So, so the, there are, uh, uh, that is if you get an error, if you get any error in the machine level language it is very difficult to uh, compile it and uh, debug. Uh, debug and compile it. So machine language is not portable as uh, each computer has its machine instructions. And uh, one more disadvantage of uh, machine level language is that it is not compatible uh, uh, with the, all the processors that is the uh, RISC and the uh, CISC processors. That is the uh, RISC stands for uh, reduced instruction set uh, computing architecture and uh, CISC stands for uh, uh, complex instruction set computing. 
so uh, like uh, uh, the first type of machine level language so it, uh, it is having some disadvantages it is not compatible it is very difficult to understand uh, if you write the program in zeros and ones then it is very uh, uh, it is difficult to uh, debug uh, debug the errors also so to uh, so the uh, to improve this so the next level of uh, uh, the hierarchy is the assembly language so the what in all the diff, uh, the disadvantages of the machine level languages were overcome in the assembly language so assembly language contains some human readable uh, uh, commands such as uh, move add subtract division so assembly language instructions uses some uh, human readable commands like add sub uh, add uh, sub division like this and the problem which are uh, facing what what is the, the the problems which we we were facing in the machine language are overcome here so such language is called as assembly language so we we can say that uh, the assembly language is an uh, extension of uh, machine language and in in the uh, in the assembly language we use some uh, uh, um, uh, the assembly language instructions are written in the english words like mo add and subtract as you see in earlier and and uh, since computer under, understands only uh, the machine level language so here we require a converter which will converts the assembly language which will convert assembly language into the uh, machine language so this we could this we call it as an assembler okay so in the assembly language we use some uh, is written in some english uh, words and after that once you write the code in the assembly language then again we have to convert it into the machine language because the computer understands only the machine language so now we'll see what is the function of an assembler so what is assembler so this diagram shows uh, the diagram of an assembler that is as, as, as assembler basically converts an assembly language into the machine language that is machine language in, in terms of zero and ones let us say like an assembly language example is like mo let us say like mo a comma hash ten eight so this is an instruction which is written so this will be converted into the machine language so uh, so the converter which we use to convert the machine language into the uh, uh, high level language is called as the assembler so now we'll see some of the uh, differences uh, between the machine level language and the assembly language so as we are know that in the machine uh, in the machine level language uh, the uh, the program is written in uh, in terms of zeros and ones as uh, whereas in assembly language we use some english words like add, add sub subtracts and all then uh, it can be easily understood by the humans so machine lang uh, machine language cannot be understand by the humans easily because it is written in zeros and ones so it is very difficult to identify whereas the assembly language uh, we are using some keywords like add sub and all so uh, in that case it is uh, easy to uh, easy to uh, remember the uh, understand the program then the machine language is written in only zeros and ones then the assembly language is uh, is a combination of both the english language as well as some of the uh, as, uh, machine uh, uh, language instructions then it does not require any translator so the advantage and uh, advantage of machine language is that it will not require any, any translator because the uh, computer under, understands only the uh, machine language so uh, uh, the converter is not required whereas when we write the code in the assembly language so we require an uh, converter which is called as an assembler which will convert uh, the assembly language into the machine readable uh, instruction uh, code so it's a uh, first generation that is uh, machine level language is a first uh, generation of programming language whereas assembly lang uh, uh, language is a second generation programming language so these are some of the uh, main differences uh, between the machine level language and the assembly language so the main difference is in the machine le level language we will be writing the code in zeros and ones which is very difficult to identify uh, uh, right as well as to understand to debug the errors and it's not compatible also uh, to understand whereas in assembly language we use some uh, english words like add subtraction and all so here we use assembler to convert assembly language into the machine level language so we have seen the low level languages that is uh, there are two types of uh, low level languages we have seen that is a machine level language and assembly la language now we'll see the high level language so the high level language all of us know is a programming language 
that allows a programmer to write programs which are independent of a particular type of computer. So, if you write a program uh, in a high level language, so uh, independent of the, uh, the architecture of the computer, whether it is a CISC architecture of the, uh, or the RISC architecture, uh, the, uh, it is compatible with in the, all the uh, platforms. So, that is why high level languages like uh, Java, Python, C, C++ are very popular. High-level uh, languages are uh, considered as high-level because they are closer or like uh, closer to the human uh, languages that the machine-level uh, languages uh, compared to the machine-level languages. So here, uh, once we write the code uh, in the uh, high-level languages, some of the ex ex examples we can write is C, C++, Java and all. So as you seen in the assembly language, we required assembler. So here, uh, here in the high level language, in the high level language, we require compiler. So the compiler here converts the uh, the source code, that is whatever the program, uh, the code which is written in the uh, high level language will be converted into the machine level language. So with the help of the compiler. So in the high level languages, we use compilers for uh, debugging the uh, for debugging the errors to identify the errors and uh, uh, to see whether it is working properly or not. So here we use a compiler which will convert our high level language uh, uh, program written in the high level language into the uh, into the low level language. So uh, some I will see some of the advantages of the high level languages. That is, high level language is uh, easy to read, write, and maintain as uh, it is written in uh, the English English uh, like uh, English like words. And the high level languages are designed to overcome the limitation of uh, low level language. That is, it is portable. It is uh, it is compared to the low level language. It is very much portable. And the high level languages uh, is like portable. That is the the languages are machine independent. That is whether we can uh, use it on any of the processors, whether it is a RISC processor or the uh, Cisco processors. So we'll see some of the differences between uh, the assembler, uh, uh, the compiler, and the assembler here. Compiler, assembler. So as all of us know, the compiler converts, the compiler will convert the high level language into the low level language, that is machine level language. So whereas uh, this assembler, it will convert the assembly language, it will convert the assembly language into the machine, machine code or machine level codes. And the second difference is that input. So the the input what we are giving, the input what we are giving is the high level codes here. Okay, high level, high level codes. So we'll see some of the differences here. So the input what we are giving here will be uh, the language codes. So the, the, the compiler will use the language codes here, whereas the lower level language it uses the uh, the instructions like add a comma h and all. Then the output, the output in the compiler. So the output in the compiler will be mnemonic here, mnemonic here. Whereas at the output of the assembler, once it converts uh, this uh, assembly language into the uh, this one uh, with the help of the assembler, so the output will be here binary codes. So then, if you see the number of operations, so how many number of uh, operations uh, the uh, the compiler is so here the compiler performs two operations. Uh, sorry, the compiler. Uh, performs only one single operation. So here, whereas the assembler uh, performs multiple operations, multiple operations. So these are some of the uh, differences here.
uh, differences between the compiler and the assembler here. So in the compiler, once the program is written, it will be converted in only one single operation, whereas the assembler uh, here multiple operations are performed in the uh, uh, assembler. So now we will see uh, the differences between the low level language and a level language. So the low level languages, in the low level languages, we will be writing uh, the program in terms of zeros and ones and uh, uh, in few uh, English words like this one. Whereas in the high level language, you will be writing the program uh, completely, which is understood in a language that is human readable language, uh, uh, which is completely understood by the humans. So, uh, like uh, to uh, here, the low level languages like assembly language like 8086, 8051, or the ARM controller. Uh, uh, 8051, 8085, 8086. So, such assembly languages are the low level languages, they'll take more time for execution. Whereas the high level languages, as you see, C, Python, Java, and all, so they execute faster compared to the low level, uh, uh, low level uh, languages. Then uh, it requires the low level languages that requires uh, assembler to convert the assembly code into the machine code, as we have discussed. In the beginning of this session, then here we require a compiler. So low-level languages uses assembler, high-level languages uh, high-level languages use compiler. Then the the machine code, code cannot run on all the machines, so it is not portable. So as we can see, the uh, the, uh, the low-level languages are not compatible with all the platforms like the discourses architectures, whereas the high-level uh, languages can run in all the platforms so it is easily you can say that it is uh, uh, these uh, high level languages are portable languages so low level languages are mem memory efficient here because we'll be writing the course directly in the zeros and ones so it is memory efficient whereas it is less memory efficient high level languages are uh, high level languages are uh, more uh, 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 less memory efficient then uh, the, the debugging and the maintenance uh, are not easier in the low level. So it is very difficult to debug the programs which are uh, written in the low level languages and it is very difficult to identify the errors also. So that is uh, the problem in the low level languages whereas in the high level languages as it is closer to the human language, uh, human readable language, the, the, the debugging and the maintenance uh, are easy in high level languages. So these are some of the differences uh, you should remember the low level languages and the high level languages so our uh, the today's next topic of discussion is a program execution so we'll see how a program is executed in a, a computer so the program execution is shown in, uh, shown in this uh, figure so here uh, we'll see the different blocks one by one so here the memory the memory consists of some registers here so uh, the registers will be there and the uh, it will store the uh, data in the memory locations then it consists of uh, the current instruction. So the current instruction it holds the uh, instruction to be executed. So in, in a computer, whatever the request we are uh, giving it to the computer, it will be taken as an instruction. So this current instruction will have the instruction to be executed. Then uh, what is the function of this data register? So there are two data registers here uh, uh, mentioned that is small in the first one. So the data registers will hold the uh, data of the instruction to be executed because it cannot uh, the data is also present in the memory also so if uh, uh, if you are taking it from the main memory it, uh, it takes more uh, time so that the data register will hold the data to be used for execution of the instruction then the compute okay so this compute uh, uh, this compute will that is uh, it will consist of uh, the instructions like addition subtraction multiplication so it is used to compute these uh, main operations in the computer like addition subtraction multiplication division and uh, other operations then the main part of the controller okay so which is used to uh, debug or which is used to decode the instruction that what instruction to be performed or what the user has requested so that is the function of the control uh, loop here so uh, how this uh, execution star, uh, starts is so the control the control unit will take the instruction to be executed uh, that is uh, <coughs> so the instructions will be present in the memory so it will be given to the current uh, instruction from this uh, the instruction will be taken uh, to the control unit so the, here the control unit will decode that what instruction to be performed then uh, then uh, with the help of if else and the loop operations 
so the control unit will initiate the execution of the instructions so uh, to start the instruction so in the computer uh, how uh, the instructions are executed means with the help of a program uh, this uh, uh, control unit uh, the control unit will give the commands so it will decode the it will take the instructions from the uh, current instruction and it will execute what uh, uh, it will it will tell the cpu it will tell the cpu to uh, instructions to be executed that is to compute what kind of operations to be performed whether it is an addition operation or subtraction or multiplication so in this way once it is executed uh, the uh, like both the read and write operations can be done so the control unit will inform the uh, the cpu to execute the instruction so this diagram uh, depicts uh, the, uh, the the working of an instruction how an instruction is is executed or a program is executed in a computer so once the one uh, the current execution is instructed then uh, it will uh, the data will be given to the again the data register then the next instruction will be executed so like this the the each time the controller will take the instruction from the current instruction and uh, the instructions will be executed one by one and as you can see these two uh, the data register and memory are directly connected so uh, the, uh, the data register will have the uh, these values so this is the working of uh, the that how a program is executed in a uh, in a computer that is it will be executed in the uh, three steps that is fetch fetch decode execute so the instructions will be fetched from the memory and it will be given to the control unit so the control unit will decode the instruction then uh, the execution will be done by the cpu that is the compute so these are the references we are used for uh, preparing this uh, presentation thank you very much like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates